it's always difficult uh, to preach after lunch. <laughs> Am I right? Because uh, you know why? Yeah, we sleep. You know why we sleep? Let me explain that. Why you sleep? And then once you know the enemy, you can fight it. See, when we eat the food, the blood from the head will go down to help to digest for digestion. That's why the blood here will be lesser. So it comes down. So when the blood is not here, you are you won't be sharp like the way you are. So morning you are sharp. Afternoon, because it's a biological thing, when it comes down, so you normally struggle actually. You try to. That's why most of the speakers, if they want to speak anything in heresy, they speak on afternoon. So nobody will question that. <laughs> they just say, yes, sir. The afternoon session always will be like, yes, sir. They will never say, no, sir. They are always sleeping and nodding their head like this. <laughs> So anyway, let's get to the word. And uh, the Church of God is uh, a body of Christ, as we have uh, discussed, as we have gone through the importance of being the body of Christ, the role and the function. How? What is your role? How you function? What is your placement? Where you are in? and how best you can work on that. So that makes the body working, functioning. No body can, cannot uh, uh, just keep quiet. It has to function, it has to run, so that uh, we, people count it as alive. So that's why the body of Christ, uh, Christ being the head. And there's one more uh, thing uh, I want to share before I get out of uh, this uh, topic. Uh, that. Uh, how many science uh, teachers are here? Science uh, doctors or science related people are here? One, so many. Two, okay. Three, three to three, okay. Okay. If uh, nobody is there, I would have said this. Uh. <laughs> because if somebody might differ with me if I say this, like, you know. So I feel that there should not be any opposition when I speak something. <laughs> but anyway, let me tell you. The pituitary gland, it is rest in the head. How many of you know that? The pituitary gland, science students, right? And growth comes from pituitary gland, not from any other place. Only it releases the growth into the body. When child grows up, the gland will release its thing so that the child grows. So whatever we do as a body of Christ, the growth has we come from Jesus Christ. So we need to pray that Lord give us grace, release the growth into our lives, into the body of Christ. That's one thing. And then when it comes to the family of God, church is a family of God because, uh, you know, Ephesians chapter 2, 19 says, it's the household of God, the family of God, because where God is the Father. This is the most important relationship one can ever have. Being a son of the Almighty God is the most wonderful feeling for any one of us. Because uh, some of you might not uh, have your fathers. I don't have my, my father passed away. Uh, so I'm so blessed that my father passed away when I was 40 uh, Plus, so you know, it's uh, by the time I got married and have kids and all, so yes, seeing my kids. But uh, some people might not enjoy the fellowship with their father for various reasons. My heart goes with them. But I want to remind you that your heavenly father is always alive, he's always there, his hand will touch you every time. And uh, you know, he always loves to stand alongside with you. His love will never fail at any given time. That's what I want to encourage you, that, uh, you know, uh, God as a father, we are family of God. When we, are, we come as a church, we should love each other, 
this is an extended family of God. When I say this, uh, you might say that, you know, uh, do I have an access to my neighbor's uh, ATM card? So, because you said pastor is a family of God, and family means, you know, my son, my, uh, you have access for everything. But, you know, it's an extended family where you have responsibility also. You know, there are two pastors, uh, they were traveling in a train. Pastors are smart guys, how many of you know that? You know that. <laughs> and uh, they were traveling. One pastor has got a tiffin box, you know, to, for, uh, for his food, lunch. Another pastor did, did not have lunch box. So this pastor who do not have lunch box, uh, he said, uh, love thy neighbor. <laughs> if you love thy neighbor, you share with him. But this pastor is a smart guy. See, he said, do not covet. <laughs> do not covet. You know, you, if somebody is, you should not covet. So that's how the family of God, you should love thy neighbor from your side, other side should not covet. So that is the family of God. See, I have a basic responsibility as a father God has given me, like to take care of my children and their, uh, whatever their needs are. At the same time, you find anybody in the church having some needs, uh, you should uh, always be willing to share with them. That speaks about the love of God. As a church, you should be a, a best example uh, for relationships, like, you know, uh, do some charity work and go to the orphanages and people who are in need. If not, you don't, if you don't find in Canada, you find somebody elsewhere in India or any other place. Not only just India, there are so many other places, African countries, there are so many places. I'm, no, I don't want to say that focus only on India. When I told uh, Vijay and Sureka, I said, you know, you need to focus on the whole world, not just India, I told them. Because when you start a church, it has to really have a world vision. So basically, India always be their priority, but definitely other parts of the world also be your priority. So as a family of God, God as a father. So the concept of this is, like, you know, you need to realize that uh, we are not orphans because the spirit of, you know, sonship, the spirit of orphan is always, uh, it contrary, it, you know, it is exactly opposite, you know. If you are a spirit of, if you carry a spirit of orphan for everything, you will be depressed, you look to somebody, you are not confident, you are vulnerable, because an orphan is always vulnerable in his uh, attitude, in his approach, and in his relationship with others. But uh, a son always be confident because he has father back of him and he loves him. So that is where uh, we need to realize this afternoon, beloved, that we are the sons of Most High God. And uh, in Bible, when we talk about sons, uh, you know, in Romans 8, 17 says, the manifestation of sons of God. I think I might have preached once uh, in this church. The, manif the, 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 uh, the creation is eagerly waiting for the manifestation of sons of God. Because the manifestation of sons of God, because they redeem people from bondage to liberty. From bondage to liberty. This is a family of God. We are all sons of God. When I say sons of God, some of the women, sisters might say that it's only a male gender. No. In the kingdom, there is no male, there is no female. All are sons of God. You can always claim, I am a son of God. Because that is what God wants you to claim, that you are the sons of Almighty God. So that's one thing that uh, the, the feeling, once you claim it, it changes your attitude. Absolutely your attitude. You know, we have an orphanage when, way back in, uh, in Hydra, Hyder Nagar. And uh, we used to have few girl kids, uh, uh, you know, we kept them with us. Then we have shifted them to another place. So when they were with us, we have a school also. We have a school. So when they went uh, on their own to uh, get uh, admitted in the school, and uh, we gave them the forms and all. As you just said, we are by, you know, within the compound. They went and uh, this teacher asked them a few questions, they could not answer them. 
they came back with a lot of, you know, uh, confusion and all. Then uh, my wife said, you know, that when they went for, you know, for admission, uh, maybe teacher might have asked some questions, they could not answer that. You know, what would be the question? Who is your father? Who is your father? Who is your mother? So, what name they say? You don't know your father's name, mother's name. Very difficult. So they came back. Then I told uh, uh, my wife, uh, call those kids and tell them that when you say who is your father, you tell them, ask them to say, Pastor Mohan Babu is my father. That's all. Go and tell them. So these girls, again, next day they went. We did not go. We went. They went there. And the teacher asked, who is your father? They said, Pastor Mohan Babu. Immediately the teacher got up from her chair. Oh, how could that? They said, this is what we have come. And they, they were asked to say this word, the hero of father. Immediately they got tremendous attention. Now, from an orphan to the owner of the school. See, they were standing like nobody, but now they are standing as the... Now, she was at the receiving hand. Because these people are the owner of this entire school now. Because their father owns it. So for you and me also, we should, because my father owns everything, everything belongs to me. Amen. Hallelujah. So that should be the attitude of a Christian to the world. You, father being, uh, heavenly father being your father. So that's what I want to encourage you this morning, this afternoon, as a church, we should have that attitude while we are interacting with God as well as interacting with others. You should lack nothing. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means, I shall not want anything. I shall not want anything. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. Everything He will provide for me. Because He is a Jehovah Jireh God. Jehovah Jireh means not just uh, is a provider, he sees and he provides. He will see your need and he will provide you. That is your father's job. When I first came to US way back in 1999, and like any, any Indian pastor, I thought of, uh, you know, that was a big church, uh, you know, in uh, at New York, Syracuse, something like that, a uh, place, first time. A wonderful man of God, and he asked me to preach the word on Saturday. I preached the word, and uh, you know, uh, while preaching, I thought, let me tell my needs to the people in a very uh, sophisticated way. We have so much of needs and all. But while I was preaching, I got this word that you know something popped out of me, as if without my notice. It's, it's, it is said, you know, I said uh, like this, uh, you know, my God shall supply all my needs, uh, not out of the riches of this country or any other country. A statement is a little negative for me because, you know, when I say that I don't need you, then they said, oh, this guy must be having a lot of money. So then uh, I said, why this has come? Okay, Lord. Anyway, I prayed for the people some Good healings are taken place, words of knowledge, prophetic words. And they said, here is a wonderful man of God has come. Next Sunday, tomorrow, the Sunday, will be even better day. So they invited many of our, their friends and all. The church was so full. And I said, at least today, let me say this word. That, uh, you know, we need something like, you know. Then, uh, while I was preaching, again, all of a sudden, it pops, it popped up like, you know, my God shall supply all my needs out of his riches, not out of the riches of this country or any other country. That's it. Then I said, wow, what is happening to me? So I uh, pre preached and all, I prayed for people and everything went on. I went to my room. Uh, I was staying with the pastor. I was just uh, uh, thinking, why this has come? Why, why should I, why did I do that? Then the Lord spoke to me, say, I am your father, I will take care of you. Not anybody. I don't give that opportunity to anybody because I am your father. 
I'll take care of you. You don't worry about anything in your life. I will never let you down. And I cried like a child that day. Afternoon, I was crying before the Lord. I will. I repented. Lord, I'm so sorry. It's not the question of my knee. It's the question of my confidence in my Father, because He is my Father. I cannot deny the existence of my Father, and I cannot deny the love He has the, with the way He loved me with an everlasting love. His love never fails on me. So I said, Lord, thank you, thank you so much. That is the day, you know, till today, God has been so good to me. I never, I never made anything on my personal thing. I never, people ask me, why don't you bring all those things? I said, it's okay, it's all right. You know, when I preach, God will take care of my thing needs. I don't need to say anything to tell anything to anybody. God is our Father. And He will take care of us. That's why, you know, when you, when you talk about all these things, your confidence comes out of your relationship. When you know somebody, you talk about them. You know, you know somebody. You know, recently when I was in, uh, in uh, Hyderabad, the finance minister called me. Mr. Nitra Rajendra, he called me. I know him from, uh, you know, for a while. So his son was getting married. I did go to him because that was on Sunday. I got an invitation, but I did not go. I said, on Sunday, nobody except Jesus. It could be anybody, but only Jesus. So, I then he called me on Monday or Tuesday. He said, Anna, would you mind coming to my uh, son's reception on so and so evening? I said, surely I come, certainly I come. But you know what? Before going to that reception, I might have told hundred people. Because you always love to tell about your higher relationships, you know. You know, this afternoon, you know, I, you know, to, what are you doing uh, on uh, day after tomorrow, Pastor? You know, I have to go to the reception because this morning the finance minister called me. <laughs> and it is a casual thing. He called me, he requested me to come to his son's reception. That's why I'm going. <laughs> Oh, oh, he, I, I will love those things. Oh, finance minister. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel that, you know, you are, how closely, highly you are connected. You know, how closely you are connected to somebody. But I always say that, you know, we are connected with the Almighty God. He is our Father. And you know, whenever you go anywhere, don't make your face a sorry face. Sir. Because you're connected to the Most High God, and that God is your Father. Amen. Hallelujah. And you be confident, you know, your Father will never let you down. Amen. Hallelujah. My kids were never let down by me at any given time. At times I give my ATM card, I, I'm not forcing fathers to give to your kids. Sir. But you know, but I gave my card. No, I told them take my ATM card because in India, fathers are there is another abbreviation for father is ATM. <laughs> Anytime money is, is equal to father, <laughs> you know. So what else we do? Said Dad, I need to go somewhere. Would you mind giving your ATM card? Okay, son, take it. Okay, take it, son. And uh, inside, outside, I don't say anything, but take it, son, be careful with my ATM card. <laughs> but thank you, dad, thank you, dad, take your card and use it. I'll be going and checking on my, you know, uh, laptop, you know, what's happening with this guy, you know, where he's going. Oh, I know, oh, this is the money. Oh, okay. Why this guy has gone to this restaurant there? You know, the restaurant bill comes on that, pops there. Oh, Jesus, this guy is using my card for even restaurant thing. Because he says, my dad's money is my money. My God's money is my money. And he is my provider. Whenever I need it, I keep that ATM card. Lord, Father, can you give your ATM card to me? Did you ask any time your father in heaven, Father, can you give me your ATM card? <laughs> I need it. So he will certainly give me. That is the fathering. 
You know, that is how Father looks at us. He wants to, he wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to provide us. That's one thing. And then, uh, let me tell you the phases of sonship. The phases of sonship. If you want, you can write it down. Bible speaks about the phases of sonship. The first word is nipios. Nipios means it's a newborn, newborn baby, newborn baby. Uh, like what? Do, what do they do? Newborn baby, they cry to attract uh, people. Newborn. So that is called nipios. And then, uh, you know, newborn babies always what they do? They actually, uh, even if they are hungry, they they cry. Their language is cry. In order to draw the attention of the people, they have nothing to say but to cry. And when they are, everything is fine with them, they smile. But if they have any need, they cry. So they want to draw the attention. So newborn babies, one thing. And the second thing is pidios. Pidios means they are kids, right? You know, small kids. The word pediatrician has come from this word, Greek word, pidios. The pidios. Uh, you know, they, are, they live in emotions. They live in emotion. Kids always live in emotion. They give, uh, go and get something from them and they take the chocolate and you, you know how kids uh, behave like uh, that is the second stage of uh, sonship. And uh, the third one is technon. Technon is like, you know, a, a, a young adult son willing to be trained. He comes and says, Father, you train me. You train me. That is the technon. And the fourth one comes, Hios. Hios means when Jesus came uh, from the baptism from River Jordan to the banks of the River Jordan, you know, Father in heaven says, Here is my beloved son. The beloved son means, Here is my Hios, my replica. Exactly he is like me. <coughs> and also another word for Hios is, it is my qualified son. He is qualified to be called as my son. Because for 30 years, he kept the law of Moses. He kept himself so that he is a qualified son. Normally in Jewish tradition, what they do is they take their son when he is 30 years of old. He says, here is my son. You respect me. Respect my son the way you used to respect me. So that is called Jesus. All the resources, they were there for him, the U.S. son. Because he is matured, he is grown up, and he can handle himself. That's why the, the prodigal son, he went to his father and asked, you know, Father, give my portion. You know why? Because he has become 30 year old. When you become 30 year old, you can ask for your father's inheritance, beloved. So that's why God wants us to grow to that U.S. level. You cannot give a gun to a kid. You cannot give a knife to a kid because they might hurt themselves. So now in the church, what we say that, Lord, I need this, I need that, but why I'm not getting it? Because you need to grow as a son. Because God should trust you that you use the, the gift, whatever the thing, responsibility is given to you to the best of your ability. That's why God wants his kids to grow as your sons, grown-up sons. Then when Jesus was a, a heos, a grown-up son, then he has become a neoniscos, because overcoming son. That is called the fifth level of sonship. From the day he was called as Huyas, the day he was gone to the cross of Calvary, he conquered the he conquered sin, death, and the enemy. Then he said, "Mio is cause overcoming son." So that's why the word Nike has come from this word. You know Nike, the tennis, uh, the shoe has got uh, Nike. The word Nike has. The, uh, come from this word. This is the origin for Nike. That's why what they say, just do it. Because you are always a winner. That's why they say, just do it. You are always an overcomer. You are always a winner. So, Christians are always a winner. Sir. You are designated as a winner in your life. 
you will never be called as a defeated people. You know, you need to realize that. That is the family of God. So, as I told you, Nippios, they cry to draw the attention. Now, what is the measure in the church? Now, this is my point. What is the measure we can measure in the church? Now, Pastor William, Pastor Rekha are there, and some leadership team is there. What is the measure now? Suppose in the church, somebody tries to draw your attention. What you call them? Tell me. Every time. Pastor Sureka. What do you call? Tell me. You tell. You need to tell. Now this is a practical session. Nipios. So Nipios always try to draw the attention of pastor or leader or father or mother because they want something they can't do on their own. Even you can't change your diaper. <laughs> somebody has to change your diaper. If somebody has to pray for you for every small thing, what does it mean? Nipios. They might not tell you on your face, but inside maybe they say, oh, Nipios, guys. <laughs> Nipios. Is this church is full of Nipios or Hios? That makes a difference about the church. Got it? And then the pidios. The next one is pidios. It is like, you know, they, were, they can walk, they can talk, but they cannot make anything on their own. They still need attention. They still need assistance. That's called pidios. So kids, like, you know, whatever age. When my kids were there, they were in pidios. Two, my daughter Sapna and my son John, they used to always quarrel like you know, they used to quarrel. Always kids quarrel, right? You know, there is nothing new in that. If they love each other very well, there's something and it can be a good big news. Sir. So quarrel. And uh, when John used to offend uh, Sapna something like beating, and I said, John, now it's a time for you to say sorry to the sister. John is reluctant. You know, I will be cannot say sorry because it was not my mistake many times we say that right it was never my mistake see my my son is getting married i'm telling him one thing son you should learn one thing to say sorry <laughs> the only thing life you know because in your life what makes you feel happy to say sorry for here for good thing or bad thing whatever thing <laughs> You know, when your wife says something, sorry, I'm so sorry about it, I'm so sorry. You know, if you, you change, sorry means not like, you know, I will tell you just now how we used to say sorry. So, uh, sorry. And also you should always realize that women are always right when they talk. Yeah. <laughs> they cannot go wrong. God will never go wrong. A woman, the next, will never go wrong. <laughs> how many of you agree with me? <laughs> but they, they are always right. They are rightest there. Yeah. So they always right. So better you should say that, you know, okay, you are right, I think, you're always right, I, I know you are, you are. You are always a great woman of wisdom. So leave it like that, you know. See, that's why I always say, I was, I was, I was counseling my son, I wanted to, I mean, I have not yet started, but when I go back, I counsel him. One thing I want to tell him, if wife is happy, life is happy. <laughs> wife is happy. One word sentence, if somebody asks me, Pastor, what is the kindness, what is that essence of your family life, you know, after 34 years of your marriage? What is that you want to tell, give the message to the people? Only one message. Wife is happy, life is happy. <laughs> what else I can say? I can win the whole world, but if my wife is not happy, the life is gone. So, these two people, when uh, I used to ask John to say sorry, and uh, John was re always, he was reluctant at the beginning. Then I said, John, nothing like, you must say sorry, you must say sorry. You know what John says? Sorry! <laughs> <laughs> As if it's again another thing, you know, another rebuke like, you know, sorry! <laughs> John, that is not the way of saying sorry. Sorry has got some feelings. Uh, to say sorry, like a feeling, like, you know, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I mean, even that also, sorry. 
I said, Sapna, that's enough because that guy is enough, whatever he said is, receive that and go. <laughs> receive it and go. So likewise, you know, when you have issues with your, in your family, issues with your siblings, issues with the people in the church, how you react, do you feel that always you are right? Do you feel that you are always the right person, others are wrong? That is the attitude of a, a pitios. Try to think uh, that, you know, maybe other person, if he is right, I am wrong, what will happen? In the family, that is the bottom line. In the beginning, I used to think my wife always speaks, you know, she doesn't know many things. Uh, but over a period of time, I realized to behave properly with her. You know, I used to, now what I, when she says something, I says, Rani, I think there is some good good thing in that. Let us pray about it. In the past, I said, oh, you don't know anything, keep quiet. <laughs> keep quiet. Now I said, no, that's not the way of dealing things. Because you need to recognize and realize the wisdom which God has given to them also. That makes me coming out of that uh, period situation into another level. You have to examine yourself. This is a self-examination List. It is not that I, I, if I say that you are yours, but you behave like a pretty ass, what does it mean? Even I give a certificate that doesn't have any value. Right? You can self assess yourself where you are in. Are you a nippious or pretty ass? A technon is always willing to learn. Though he has some limitations, struggling with his issues, but still he loves to be disciplined by God. Uh, you know, he wants to train by God. That is like life of Joseph. Joseph was, you know, his story, all you know the story. He was willing to learn. God gave him a great vision. That you are going to be the prime minister of Egypt. God always speaks the purpose, not the process. God told, uh, you know, Vijay and Sureka, go to Canada and plant a church. The purpose, not the process. If they would have known that process is so difficult, they would say, Sir, Lord, look to somebody. Because the process is not that easy. You have to go to a lot of pain, agony, tears and rejection. Many things in life. You bring up somebody who is out of the church, you know, you bring him, and bring that person, lady or a person, and train him, give him the best of what you have. Every At the end of the day, she says, oh, I don't like her because she said this, leave the church. Very, very difficult, uh, heartbreaking situation. Am I right or wrong? When you pour out your life into somebody, after some time, they just feel like, oh, God spoke to me to leave this church. How many, why did God speak to you? One guy came to me, God spoke to me. They said, God did not speak to me anyway. If God speaks to you, why should I come in between you and God? Better you take a decision. See, that's what happens. So in the family, the technon is a, 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 a situation willing to learn. Joseph was willing to learn. You know his story from Peter. God was teaching him to look to him all the time towards him. Because in the pit you have no choice but to look to him only. Nobody is there to fellowship, only to God. From there to Fortiparo's house. You know he was he was sold out as a slave. God told him that you are going to be the prime minister but he was sold out as a slave. That means he lost his identity. He was sold out in the market like a slave. When Potiphar came, he saw, oh, this young man could be a better worker in my house. He lost his identity. You know, the fact is he lost his identity, but the truth is God can take care of him. Every time, beloved, you, when you go to the fact, you deal the fact with the truth of God. What is the truth of God? That is the word of God. Yeah. Your situation may be totally difficult, adverse to you. But you can tell that, yes, I know the fact it is bad. But the truth is, it comes from God. He takes care of me. 
when Jesus, you know, when he was there, you know, um, you know, he was hungry for 40 days and nights. He was uh, going, for, he was fasting. He came out, and the devil came, came to him and said, "If you are a son of God, turn these stones into bread." What was the fact there? There was no bread, just stones, and Jesus was hungry. That was the fact. But the, Jesus spoke the truth. What is the truth? Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that proceeded from the mouth of God, that is the truth. Because every time God speaks to you, the devil will come and question that. God will say, are you, are you still loved by God? Are you special? No, no, no. Special means only Pastor Vijay and Sureka must be special. Pastor Mohan Babu must be special. But not me. Because if I am special, why these things happen to me? That's the question David will try to put in your life spin about. Always says that. I am not special. I am not that uh, uh, close to God. You know, you might not be close to God, but God is always close to you. Always He loves you. Beloved. He takes care of you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. That's why Jesus said to the devil, he said, man shall not live by bread alone. Every word that proceeded from the mouth of God, 40 days back, when Jesus came to the banks of uh, River Jordan, God from heaven, from the heaven ripped open, and God said, here is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. He said, I bank on my God's, my father's word. Not on your word. What the devil said? If you are son of God. Every word that God speaks to you, the devil will create a doubt in your mind. Is this for me? Can I take this word? Will God bless me? Will God change my life in a better way? Is it possible? For God, everything is possible to love. God can restore the years you have lost. And Joel says, I don't know. When I was preaching that word, I said, I don't know how it happens, but God said, I will restore your years back. Wow. That really blesses my heart. Not only money, even what you have lost, the years the locusts have eaten. If anybody is here, you have lost something, this is the word of God for you. He will restore back everything what you have lost. Because he is your father. He enjoys when you are happy. He says, thank you father. That's the word he wants to listen from you. That's why he will restore back everything what you have lost. Ten times, maybe sometime. I don't know how he is going to do that, but he will do it for you. Because he is your father. And that's what we need to have that uh, faith in him. Then comes beloved, uh, the Hewas comes. Hewas is such a thing you need to be qualified by your by your commitment and your life. You need to be you need to be, be qualified by your life and your commitment. Uh, growing in the word of God, growing in the presence of God, transforming into the likeness and image of God. Uh, you you have a character of God in your life. What is meant by character? Character is, you know, when things, when, when you have to make a decision, even it hurts you, you will do that decision according to the word of God. That is character. It doesn't mean that, you know, oh, it is hurting me, Lord, I'm sorry. No. Even if it hurts me, Lord, if it is, if it is your will, it is the word of God, I will follow it. That is the character. You know. That is yours. Jesus never con contradicted his father's word. Even if he has gone to the cross, he just said, I have done it. You might be seeing, you might be feeling that, you know, Lord, you know, you don't know what I am going through right now. Father, you don't know, Father. You know, uh, I am going in a deep trouble right now. You, can you speak to Jesus about that? He has already gone through every problem you have gone in your life. Can I, can I say something about that? He has to submit himself to his parents who are less spiritual than him. He knew his God. He submitted to his parents. 
We only want to submit to the higher people than us, not to the people who are lower to us. And then the situation comes in, he is submitted for 30 years to his parents. And the Roman law is the most, uh, you know, uh, fair law uh, one can ever see. The Roman law went wrong when it comes to Jesus Christ. When the courts are going against you at times, you said, Lord, the courts are going against me. You know what Jesus says? You and the courts went against me. The Roman court went against me. You might say, Lord, I have been so good to those people. I have helped them all through what, with money, everything. And I have been such a blessing to them. Jesus says, I healed so many people. Instead, they shouted me, crucify him. You do good to somebody. If they speak against you, it hurts you badly. It hurts you very badly. But Jesus was always already there in, in, the, in your place, beloved. You cannot say that, Lord, you don't know. He knows very well what exactly that is. The pain and the shame. He was there. His, his disciples, Peter, denied him three times. Ten people deserted him. What betrayed him? He was with him all those years. Have you seen any time Jesus speaking against Judas? Iscariot? Never. Never he spoke. Instead of, he gave him, he gave him the, the money box. The money back. A responsible, responsible he has given. What would be his uh, prayer when he was appointing twelve disciples? Twelve apostles. All through the night he was praying. Father was clearing their names. Peter, John, James, this, that, everything. Finally, Judas is coming. Jesus would have said, Lord, I don't want him now. Give him at the last year, last week of my going to crucifixion. Let him come and betray me. Because I cannot live with him all three and a half years, Father. But Father said, that is the best test for you. If anybody feels today that I am tested, Jesus was tested more severely than anybody in this room, including myself. Anybody in this room. He has to love his betrayer. Every time he sees him, he has to love him. Because God is God will watch our hearts. He will not, uh, you cannot pretend. You can pretend before men that, oh, I have so much of love for you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But what is inside, only God knows. God tested Jesus more than anybody. He has to love his betrayer for three and a half years. Finally, when he was about to betray him, Jesus said, my friend, my friend, how can you do that? God tested him more severely than any one of us. So that's what I want to encourage you. Don't ever tell Jesus, Lord, you don't know what I am going through. He knew pretty well, even beyond your expectations, he has gone through those things. See, whenever Jesus used to see Judas, he used to say that, I am the, I am the way, truth and life to people, but this guy is my way to the cross. <laughs> this guy is my way to the cross. I am the way to everybody, but this is a guy for me to way to the cross. If he is not there, I cannot go to cross. See, that is what the way you look at things. Some people God sends in your life to strengthen your spiritual life. So, don't think that why they have come in your life. They will test you, they will make you feel strong. They will take you through the situations, ups and downs in your life. But never forget that God as a father, he will be always there for you, he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That is the family of God. And what we need to exercise that in the, in the church life, that you know, love one another and uh, just to take care of one another the way you possibly you can do. And uh, you need to, when, when people come to this church, they should say that this is the family of God. This is a family and everybody loves each one. You know, everybody cares for each one. 
and it's not it doesn't matter whether they are high class low class middle class they love each other irrespective of their backgrounds that is the that is what god wants from you and me in the world to be a family of god and then i don't have much time but still i will just go through few things and wrap it up then comes uh, the worship 21 i think uh, ephesians 2:21 it is said that you know a church is a, a temple of god where jesus is to be worshiped let me ask you a question who is number one in your mind who is number one jesus should be the number one in your mind and it comes to anything one day my wife i told you i don't know why i told you or not one day she came to me and said you are not number one in my mind as an indian husband i was devastated <laughs> what is this girl what is this lady talking to me and she is a nice girl i know all these years but all of a sudden how could she say that you are not number one in my life and then she was slowly said say she said jesus is number one in my life now i said oh this is a totally like you know trump card like you know when you have a trump card others have no card i have nothing to say now what do i say now i cannot compete with jesus because you know he has given life for her not me i want to tie the knot for you know the you know the and the neck and i promise uh, many things but i could not fulfill many things to her you know but what do i how can i compete with him so okay i said okay i was really hurt you know and every has indian husband especially they get very hurt when somebody says you are not number one for me then i said okay what is that retaliation human nature is always retaliation right i thought for a while then i said rani 